Hey everybody, so uh, it's been a long time and I just wanted to show you a little something. I got a flat on my pebble on the right hand front tire and I just wanted to show you how to change a tire. I'm sure most of you know how to do this, but in case you don't, now it was not a, a hard flat, it was like a slow leak and it's just gotten to the point where it's kind of annoying. So now I'm gonna deal with it. Um, so what I did was I jacked it up using a car jack to the front strut see where it's mounted there's actually a screw there figured that'd be a good solid location and so I put it on there and jacked it up now I'm gonna jack it up a little bit more before I take the front wheel off I've already loosened up the front lug um, kinda just at the last minute decided I should video this alright so I move this thing around a little bit so hopefully I'll be able to see anything I'm gonna finish jacking this baby up get it up a little higher so I can take the wheel off easily and such always good if you can get home to deal with repairs so you have a nice clean dry garage to be in you know clean as mine is which is not very clean but cleaner than being out on the road on my knees all right there you go and uh, so like I said I had already taken the liberty of um, I'm gonna just tilt this a little bit um, of loosening this nut up here with, before I even decided to video this thing um, but I'm gonna just finish undoing it there's a uh, big nut there and a washer you see those just put those right there and there's a little rubber cap that goes on the outside here that kinda just protects that and once you've got that loosened you just with the front wheel it's super nice because you just pull it straight off it's not like a a disc where it's got a disc and junk so here is the drum front hub pretty simple um, it's just got a big screw on it and it's got this washer assembly um, there's really no reason for me to take this off so my temptation is and this is what I would probably recommend if you're out on the road I just put it back the way you found it that way there's no chance you're gonna lose any of your junk um, and uh, let me roll this out here a little bit and then hopefully this mic's picking me up I'm kind of down anyway um, just wanted to show you this assembly here so this is basically the way this thing functions I don't know if I can squeeze this and show you but when you squeeze that it basically presses these pads up against the outside of the housing and as this thing wears down this pad will need to eventually be replaced and that's how those work. I mean, it's really simple. Um, because of the fact that there's so much mass in here, and because there's so much mass in here, it takes a hell of a lot to heat them up. Like, a hell of a lot. Unlike a disc, where it's a, a thin piece of metal that's like not even as thick as this piece right here, it, uh, it takes a lot to heat that up. And that overheating is what causes your brakes to fail one thing that's nice with this too is, you know, it's a cable system, so cable doesn't care if it gets hot really. And uh, generally speaking, these pads aren't going to care if they get hot. They'll be less efficient and they'll eventually, I suppose if they got really, really, really hot, they could start to break down prematurely. I guess I just recommend avoiding, you know, 20% downgrades, you know, at speed. <laughs> All right, so um, first step. You got your wheel taken off. Unfortunately, I've had an awful lot of experience changing tires from my mountain biking days. Um, when I first started mountain biking, I had this bad habit of running my tire pressure too low and I'd get pinch flats all the time. So, pinch flats kind of what happens when you've got your tire, like say it was this low pressure, and you ram up against an obstacle that has a sharp edge, like a rock. You go bink like that, and this sharp edge or rock basically smacks this tube and uh, oftentimes what it'll do is it'll pinch between here and the rock inside won't damage the outside casing at all and your tire will go <laughs> really sucks anyway um, so it can happen on these of course if you ran the, re the pressure too low etc so uh, I'm gonna let a little bit more air out of here there's just a tiny bit of air left in this tire um, and then I always like to start opposite 
of where the uh, where the um, little nozzle is, and also because I've got this nice rim tape on this side, I'm gonna I'm gonna go from this side. So I don't want to damage this thing. So I'm using Park tire levers, the only kind I ever use. Um, when you buy them, they come in a three pack. You only really need two. So I buy two packs and I keep one set on my road bike and one set in here. That's why they look a little different. These are older. Anyway, um, the two is the key. So what you do is basically just pinch this thing over and roll this little guy right underneath here. There's kind of a little hook and then there's a little catch piece on this other side. So you're basically trying to go right under the bead there. And you just kind of force it. Oh boy, that's tight. Hold on. Maybe I just need to get it over a little bit more. I don't want to break my tire lever. Oh, there we go. Okay. So once you get it over, you basically hook that. That's what those little hooks are for. Hook it around there. And then use the other one to go underneath here. I'm just going to go all the way around. Just kind of unzip it like a zipper. So there you go. Now, I'm doing a change because this thing's been plaguing me for a while and it's kind of pissing me off. And you can do a patch. I'm sure you guys all know how to patch a tire. Basically what I'd do is I'd take this inside, get some soapy water on my hands and just go around this thing and then put a little air in it and look for those little holes that are bubbling. Um, for me, I'm kind of like, eh, I'm done with this tire. Tubes like you know, a year and a half to two years old. So I'm, I'm ready for a new one. Um, so the next step is this one's got, um, there's some basically tire liner in here to protect this. So you want to look in that and make sure basically you're looking to make sure there's not some garbage in there, you know, like a uh, thorn. <laughs> Cause uh, real frustrating when you put a brand new tire in you know, brand new tube that you just spent like eight or ten bucks on, and then right after you put it in and inflate it, psh, that's annoying. <laughs> Not like it's ever happened to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> anyway, so um, that being said, I'm going to just take a quick gander on this thing and make sure I'm also going to realign this because I noticed that it's not straight in here, which isn't going to help me as much as it would if it was straight. So I'm going to just take a quick gander in this thing and see if I can see anything that looks like an offender. Um, the other thing you can do, boy this thing's got some dirt man, um, is look around on your rim tape and make sure your rim tape looks good. Since I've never actually looked in these tires before, I will tell you that the rim tape looks really good on these. It's, uh, it's Velox, made in France, really good rim tape. Does not surprise me, these are really super nice rims, that the rim tape is good. Uh, but anyway, just my two cents worth. Um, so this tire also, you can look at it. You see that thing is, this is obviously the direction that it flows. Because you can see how it's worn kind of unevenly on the inside versus the outside. Now, uh, I could rotate this thing right now, but um, truthfully, it's uh, it's not like grossly unevenly worn. I mean, it's a little uneven. But if I uh, if I f swap this baby around, then I got to swap the other side around, and I'm just not really interested in that right now. So I am going to skip that step. But that is a step you might take if it's been a long time, or if your tires are starting to look pretty rough, like they're starting to get flat on one side. You know, um, like I said, you can kind of see where the wear marks are on here. And it's, it's roughly even, so I mean, I'm not too worried about it. Um, so, step two, after you get those things out, is to pull out your new tire, your new tube. Obviously, make sure it's the right size. This one is the right size, I confirmed that. Um, and it's uh, still a, what's called a Schrader tube. Not the kind I normally use, but... These suckers in this big size, they are hard to find in Presta. So, um, where's my pump? And because the other two are also Schrader, I'm gonna just stick with the theme because it'd be weird to have two different types of tubes. So, when you're putting your new tires in, you just wanna, oop, that's really loud. Wanna give it a little bit more, a little bit of air. There it goes. That's 
weird. It's like I didn't know that it was on Schrader valve or something. All right, well, you just want to give it enough pressure to make shape. So, let's give it a little bit of shape, not too much. That's probably almost too much. Back a little bit off of that. You want to give it enough pressure to give it a little bit of shape, but not so much that it's going to like fill up your tire and make it hard to get in. So, I'm going to put that on. What you're looking for now is your, your valve stem again, your full, wherever she is. There. So, I'm going to put that in here. And then through the hole, just like so. Bink. And then I'm going to start fishing this baby in here again. A little bit at a time until I get it all the way around. And then now I'm going to go back to where the valve stem is. Now, really, really, really important thing. Anytime you put on a, a bike tire, make sure this sucker is straight. If you put it on and it like rotates a little bit, just about guaranteed you're going to give yourself another pinch flap as soon as you go down the road very far. Because it basically rotates that rim and uh, puts it, you know, in a bad angle and then the stem gets unhappy and then you got a problem. So I'm just going to work my way around this thing. This is a much bigger tire than I'm used to dealing with, just to say. I usually ride on 2.1s on my on my mountain bike. I know some guys like to rock the big 2.4s or the 2.6s or whatever, but I've got 5 inches of travel, so that's just ridiculous. It's just a lot of weight to drag around. And uh you know, yeah, you have a little bit more traction with the bigger tire, but I don't know, it's harder to climb, so I don't like them. And that's why they make all the variety. So as far as this, you're just rotating it until it snaps over the top. Now some of these suckers can be a real bear. Um, for instance, my uh, my Mavic rims that are on my mountain bike, they are freaking hard to get over. So sometimes I have to actually use a tire lever to get it back on the rim and just kind of work my way around. You don't ever, ever, ever want to use a screwdriver or a tool because, well, I'm sure you can imagine a hard metal object versus a skinny little rubber thing. You know which is going to win. So I'm just going to put a bit more pressure in this thing. This being such a big tire, it's going to take a few, a few strokes, as you can imagine, to get it pumped up. So I'm just going to look at it here and feel around. Something that I also like to do, a little trip, trick of the trade, is I like to go around and bounce it. And the reason why I do that is sometimes there's a little bit of friction in there that's kind of holding the tire back. And if you pump it up to full pressure before you get all that pr that stuff out, it'll make this really loud sound and kind of scares the crap out of you. You think, oh, dang it, I just changed that tube for nothing. So try to avoid that. Anyway, this thing topped off. Put it back on. It's going to be nice to not have a flat tire that I have to keep pumping up all the time. I mean, it would stay for like, I don't know, a day and a half or something, but it's kind of frustrating. So I put about 30 to 32 in here. Um, this thing says, let's see right here on the tube, inflate to 40 PSI, 2.8 bar. That's like your maximum inflation. Um, I like to have it a little softer. I'm going to take it up to just over 30. It just gives you a little bit more of a compliant ride. And I'm not really interested in going like maximum speed. 
if that was my big concern, I would swap these tires out for Schwalbe Marathons because they are bomb proof. You will never put a hole in those unless you run over a piece of rebar or big shard of glass or something. So there is our completely nice tire. Since I got this thing off of here and I can get easily to the other side, I'll take the time to dust her off a little bit. Check pressure of the uh, these every once in a while. It's a good idea. Just make sure they're holding good tension evenly and they are. All right. I got the tire rechanged here. Roll this baby in here. And take this step back off that I left on here before. Set these aside so I don't lose them somewhere. And this thing just roll this sticks right on here. It's super simple, which is nice. All right, so it's going through. This uh, lock washer goes on next, and then the big screw. And uh, obviously, I'm going to need to get a wrench to tighten this up, which I'm not going to bore you with, because everybody knows how to tighten a screw. If you don't, you've got the wrong product. All right, got it tightened up. And now, I'm just going to drop this sucker down, and we are ready to roll again. So that, everybody, is how you change a tire on a pebble if you have your garage and all your other stuff. Now, if you don't, what some people are doing is they're literally carrying a, a car jack with themselves, which I don't think, oops, I went the wrong way, which I don't think is a bad idea. Um, now that I've done this, uh, I know Damon's got AAA, and he actually literally will just call AAA, and they will come and flatbed his pebble to the nearest repair shop which I think that's a great idea that's probably what I should do um, but uh, truthfully for me it's like I guess I just uh, I carry enough tools to get me by and if I had to push it home I'd push it home it's not a big deal I'm not going 50 miles so um, push came to shove I'd probably just push it and not ride in it or you know if it was just flat you could probably just ride it flat if it's a more serious problem you know like you got a, a major I don't know some sort of major issue I guess the uh, plan would be to just you know call somebody call a friend that has a big full-size truck and you guys could hoist it anyway thank you have a great day